no, Oscar, no, I don't actually need you to hold my martini. It's just an expression. It's like, hold my beer and watch. Yes, it is an expression. No, no, you can't have it. It's a martini. It's not for dogs. Now, just never mind. Stay over there and behave yourself. And I've got people to talk to. Hi, um, welcome to Nicole Knits Under the Influence podcast. This is episode one, Hold My Martini. And in case uh, it wasn't clear, I'm Nicole. <laughs> it's really great to have you here. I'm just going to put my martini down for the moment um, while I talk to you a bit more and uh, to spend time with me and see what I'm about and um, what, what and who influences me um, and my knitting and my view of the making world. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> uh, wow, this, this is weird. I got to tell you people, for those of you who have never done this and put yourself out on YouTube like this, it's weird. There's no one in the room with me except Oscar. And um, yeah, it's a little odd and uncomfortable. I'm sure I'll get used to it. But in the meantime, you're going to have to get used to me being a little hmm, odd for a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you for putting up with this. Um, I'm coming to you from beautiful North Saanich, Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Um, and because you probably don't know where North Saanich is, I'm about a 20 minute drive from Victoria, British Columbia. Victoria is the capital of British Columbia. And I'm about, mm, for those of you in the States, I'm about 86 miles um, as the crow flies from Seattle. Um, so that'll give you an idea of where I am in the world. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day here today and it's Labor Day. So I have a day off, which means I have time to do this. Yay. Um, I live here with my husband equivalent, who I will likely just refer to as he who shall not be named. Um, but one thing you do need to know about him is um, he tells uh, terrifically terrible um, dad jokes and puns. And um, if he ever tells a good one, uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> so far, <laughs> hasn't happened yet. So we'll see. Um, I also live with uh, Oscar, our uh, Jekyll and Hyde uh, Dachshund Jack Russell Terrier mix, who um, we rescued him about six years ago. And uh, he's absolutely sweet and adorable until the doorbell rings. And then uh, he turns into like a Cujo Tasmanian devil mix and um, goes berserk. And then he goes back to sweet and lovable as soon as whoever arrives steps through the door. So that's Oscar. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about you. No, no, I can talk about you all I want because I own your furry butt. Anyway, he'll likely be in the room when I'm doing this. So we'll just have to put up with him and his comments from the peanut gallery over there. Um, I have two day jobs. Uh, one of them is working full time for he who shall not be named. And the other is uh, casual work for my former full time employer. And uh, I have been making things um, since I can remember. Uh, I used to kind of eat up craft kits when I was a kid, like um, nobody's business. Um, you'd hand me one, I'd have it done. Uh, an hour later and want another one and that's just been my whole life. Um, I have done just about everything there is to do in fiber arts, uh, knit, crochet, sew. I used to teach sewing and do custom tailoring and dressmaking for a living. Um, that was quite a long time ago. Um, I've done embroidery, cross stitch, uh, silk ribbon embroidery, uh, quilting, um, boy, I don't know. I've uh, needle. I do some needle felting, three dimensional, and I'm gonna start doing some flat two um, D needle felting stuff because it's really cool. Um, I, yeah, yeah, pretty much you name it, and uh, I've tackled it or played with it or experimented or had some fun because I just love fibers. 
So lately though, mostly what I do is knitting and uh, I'm leaning into crochet a little bit as you'll see. Um, but you know, we'll talk more about that later. I have a uh, blog, NicoleKnits.com, and you will find links to my um, video uh, podcasts. I don't know why these are called podcasts now, but they are. Um, so this is a podcast, even though it's video and audio and not just audio, but this is a thing. This is a podcast, so I'm just going to go with it. Um, so you'll find links there, NicoleKnits.com. And uh, I've been knitting for a really, really, really long time. Um, I'm certain that I put in my 10,000 hours of practice. And um, some people say that makes you a master or something, except pff, forget it. There's no way. Um, I don't think you can master knitting. There's always something new to learn. Uh, there are techniques I haven't done, um, although I've done probably the vast majority but there are some I haven't done and we'll get into those in another episode but yeah there we are um my knitting philosophy is I want to knit well and I'm always looking for ways to get better results from my knitting and uh, that's what I'm here to share with you is um the results that I get what works what doesn't work what I recommend um what has influenced me um, stuff like that. So pretty exciting. I've got a lot to talk about. I could talk about knitting for days without stopping. And, uh, but I'll try not to subject you to that today. So, uh, today I thought what I would do as an intro to the type of work I do, because I'm sure you're interested. I'm going to make my chair squeak while I shift position here. Um, is I'm going to go through uh, my whips. Now, uh, for you muggles out there, um, i.e. non-knitters, uh, whips are works in progress. W-I-P, whip. And so I have compiled them here um, in various containers and on my desk. And um, yeah, there are a lot of them. <laughs> so I'll try to go through them with a certain amount of expediency so I don't keep you here. Um, all day. Although, you know, this is a recording, it, you're free to press pause or off or, um, you know, I never want to hear from you again, lady, um, you know, whatever. It's all good. Uh, you don't have to watch it all in one sitting. I won't judge you. So let's get started. So um, let's start with one that I was actually knitting on this morning because it's a whip that's like active. So let's look at that. Um, here it is. It's in this uh, Cocoa Knits um, paper canvas uh, basket thingy. Very cool. I like that it's nice and stiff, holds lots of stuff. Uh, it's good. I will try to remember to put links to things I talk about um, down below here. Um, so you can just click and and go because I know you're gonna ask questions. Oh, oh my God! Speaking of asking questions, you're gonna you're gonna want to know what I'm wearing. Um, this is let me just stand up a bit so you can see it. Um, this is Whip It by uh, I'm gonna butcher this, but um, I believe it's Anka Strick, and uh, she's a designer uh, from Europe. She's fantastic, and I had had Whip It in my queue for a bazillion years. And finally, uh, when did I make this? Uh, two years ago. I made this two years ago. Um, I wear it a lot. It's uh, made with um, Madeline Tosh Twist Light. Madeline Tosh, as you will find out, is one of my favorite yarns. Um, beautiful stuff. Uh, wears like crazy and so good. Um, this color is called Nocturne. And uh, it's not a fancy sweater, but it's got this kind of cool mesh. I think you can see there the cool mesh, yeah. Um, and on the sleeves and on the uh, body, um, the shape is just like, and very wearable, easy to wear over a plain t-shirt, um, a nice shirt, like whatever, dress it up, dress it down, what have you. It's wearable, I like it. So anyway, back to my whips. Uh, so, the whip, I'm going to move my martini, <laughs> it's in the way, don't want to knock it over, that would be bad. 
Um, here is this little guy. This is the, oh, you know what? I left the pattern downstairs. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure I link this down below so you can see what the pattern is. Um, this is the unbearable hoodie. I haven't done the hoodie yet. I've just got the, the body here. And this is obviously in progress, not blocked. Um, this is for my granddaughter. And she has, as you can see, like gorilla arms. So I want to make sure she'll be able to wear this forever. Um, Casey, you don't have girl arms. You have beautiful arms. They just happen to be very long. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's super cute. Um, I've been experimenting with the different methods of stranded knitting. So if you actually looked on the inside of this, uh, float wise there's a bunch of different things going on and i don't want to get into this too much today because this will be a whole episode in itself um, of different methods for handling floats when you're doing stranded knitting i actually ripped this back the first couple of inches of the color work about three or four times because i was trying out different methods mm. and um until i finally picked one that mm, it's just working really nicely for me so uh, I'll talk about that another time. Uh, the yarn that I'm using for this is fantastic. So the pink you see here is Bo Peep Pure, 100% Falkland Islands wool from West Yorkshire Spinners. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And then the white and the charcoal gray that the bears are, is uh, Valley Yarns Northfield, which is 70% um, Merino, 20% Baby Alpaca, and 10% Silk. Yum! And I actually have <clears throat> ordered uh, a bit more of it because it's so yummy. I want something for myself in this yarn, so um, I have a bit of that coming, but we'll, we'll look at that another day. So there's that. So uh, this sweater is obviously active. Um, I'm pretty close to getting it done. I'm on the second sleeve and then I do the hoodie and that one will be finished. So this one is under control and in rotation and uh, I don't have a timeline for it, but it's just so cute. I can't stop knitting it and the yarn is so squishy and yummy. Anyway, I'm going to get it finished soon. So no worries about that one. Another whip that I'm actively working on is, oh, and I left the pattern for this one <laughs> downstairs too. <laughs> Silly me. Um, and you know what? Oh my God, I can't even remember what this is called. Did I put the pattern on my, I'm, I'm leaning over so I can look on my desktop <laughs> to see if I put the pattern on my desktop. Oh, good grief. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to like edit this, so, <laughs> I think, so I can tell you what this is. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to this. Okay. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a cowl. Oh, I think it's called, I think it's called Lederdam and um, by uh, Mika John, I hope I've got that right. Ugh, terrible. Anyway, I'll, what I'll do is I'll get it right and I'll put it in the notes down below there so you can check this out. Anyway, um, so I really shouldn't, I cast this on like a couple of weeks ago and I shouldn't have, but I, you know, I'm part of this Knit Stars Yarniverse thing and there was a, there was an online um, meeting come together and they're doing a knit along and that's again for you muggles a knit along is when a whole bunch of knitters like knit the same project at the same time and they kind of connect with each other and chat and show off what they're doing and it's really fun anyway um so people were knitting uh one two versions of a cowl that uh mika john um designed uh and did in one of the knit stars and I couldn't tell you which which Knit Stars series it was but anyway it was a project 
in one of the Knit Stars series. I'll talk about Knit Stars another time. Um, and uh, so I, because of me, <laughs> did the advanced one and took me a couple of tries to pick out the colors, but you can see there, can you, can you, there you go. If I get rid of my face, you can see um, the colors. I'm really happy with them. They're working out quite nicely. There's a lovely kind of bright green in here and then this beautiful um, tonal, um, tonal uh, Mad Tosh, I think that's Mad Tosh, um, and a bit of white in there. So uh, what am I working with here? I've got, oh boy, I am, I thought I was organized today, but I'm not. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll talk about this again <laughs> next time because I don't have the ball bands. I just have the yarn in this project bag. Uh, yeah. Um, I bought this project. This is a beautiful project bag. Um, I bought it at the Vibrations uh, Fiber Festival, which is recent. Um, and I have the tag that says Canvas <laughs> Leather Project Bag. But again, I don't have the maker's info in here. I've got nothing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, is this? I No, this isn't. Nope, knit ready kits. Nope, nope, nope. That's not it either. Boy, whew, I suck at this. Okay, um, moving on. <laughs> so this is, I'm working on this because it's kind of fun. It's easy. Uh, I can take it in the car and um, I'm about halfway through. So, um, and I just, yeah, because it's a knit along and other people are doing it and I want to be able to show it when I go to one of these online meeting things, I, I will keep working on this. Um, in rotation frequently to get it done soon too. Okay, now, um, okay, another one I'm kind of actively working on a little bit now and then is a pair of socks that I started in January. Okay, so <laughs> here's the thing. I was going to do this thing. I saw it on a podcast. I can't remember whose it was, but they were talking about how if you knit, like, uh, you work, you cast on a pair of socks and then you work on them like 10 minutes a day, that, you know, you could really pretty much knit a pair of socks a month. And like by the end of the year, you'd have 12 pairs of socks. I thought, that's fantastic. I have tons of sock yarn. I really hardly ever cast on and work socks. Um, and I, but I want the socks. Like, I love hand knit wool socks. They're fantastic. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, I, ca I cast them on in January and I was pretty good about knitting on them a little bit every day for a while. And then I stopped working on them and they sat and they sat and they sat and they sat. And in May and June and part of July, um, he who shall not be named and I and Oscar took a uh, yeah yeah shut up yes you again um it took a, uh, a RV trip we we got in our lovely big RV and we drove all the way across Canada to Newfoundland and back and a little bit into the states anyway long drive I think about 16,000 kilometers in the end it was so fun and yeah I did buy a bunch of yarn and stuff we can we can look at my yarn and stuff that I bought <coughs> excuse me on that trip later I think I need a sip of my martini mm, really good um so in case you're wondering what's in my martini it's uh Tanqueray Rang Per Lime Gin and Cinzano Vermouth a generous amount of vermouth. I do not subscribe to the um, like wafting the vermouth bottle over the glass of gin nonsense. And uh, anyone I have made a martini for will tell you my martinis are the best martinis. So, and um, olives uh, stuffed with almonds. That's my go to. Anywho, I digress. Uh, back to the socks. So um, I started them. We went on the big trip. I, I stopped working on them. We went on the big trip. I didn't take them with me. 
um, and came back, still didn't work on them. And recently I picked them up and thought, okay, I really need to get these done. So um, here they are. Uh, I was knitting them two at a time and they're going to have uh, you can see they don't have a <laughs> they don't have a heel yet because it's going to be an afterthought heel. So there's a spot here where I've marked. I'm going to cut, pull this apart, and add a heel. And then when the heel's in there, they will look like a sock. Um, and then there's a bit of color work I'm doing at the top. Oops, <laughs> so I'm tapping my martini glass. Excuse me. You stay over there. Uh, I started working on the color work at the top um, and I did do several rounds of it working them two at a time too complicated don't try to do this uh, so I've separated them out you wouldn't know that because they're tangled as can be here you guys stop it so I've got stop it so here I've got um, this one I separated out and I'm I'm working more on this one. You can see a little bit more of the color work happening up there. Anyway, um, they're pretty close to being done. Uh, I literally have like about six rounds of the color work left to do. And then I'm going to do a folded hem at the top because that's my favorite hem on socks. So I'll have to knit um, 13, 14 rounds and then uh, I'll fold it over and sew it in to the inside. Um, maybe when I get to that, I'll show you how that's done. Would that be interesting? Or, well, you can let me know in the comments if you think that'd be interesting. Um, I can show you how to do that. Okay, pair of socks. Now, um, another whip that's here that's pretty close to being finished. However, um, this is, uh, this is uh, Bloom by Julie Hoover. This is this is it right here. Bloom. So it's sleeveless or you can add sleeves. So I chose to add sleeves to mine and uh, I created um, a very nice fabric by marling two yarns together. And in case you don't know what marling is, marling is taking two yarns that are usually pretty contrasty because if they don't have a lot of contrast, it doesn't really look like anything. Um, then you're just blending yarns. And uh, so this is what it looks like that the yarns held together. So one of them is this, which is uh, Manos del Uruguay, Serena, which is a baby alpaca and cotton, Pima cotton blend, super soft, yummy. And the other is uh, North Light Fibers, uh, which was a, a yarn, sorry, I covered my face so that, hang on, I'll learn how to do this right, I promise. Um, at North Light Fibers Lace, uh, Forever Lace, in uh, and it's um 80 percent baby alpaca and 20 percent bamboo so also <clears throat> an alpaca um plant fiber mix so i blended those together to make this very yummy fabric which is quite substantial yet still drapey and soft and i decided because i'm me to get a little fancy and so I did um, a bit of uh, con contrast in this um, cashmere. It's 100% cashmere uh, pepperberry knit sport weight um, cashmere. I've had this for a long time. I thought this was a good use for it. Anyway, so there's a there's a little smidge of it at the hemline. There's a little smidge of it down the center front and center back because the way this piece is knit is in two pieces. You actually knit, um, you knit like one half of it from center front to center back on both sides. So you knit two of them like that and then sew them together up the center back and up the center front. I did not sew it all the way to the top because I prefer a v-neck. 
So uh, I got that far and then I knit one sleeve also in the contrast color because I thought that would be kind of cool having a contrast the sleeve in the same color as the trim. Cool, right? Um, it's cool. Very nice. Beautiful fabric, beautiful design, beautiful yarn. I put it on. Not crazy about it. You know, it just, it, it's all lovely. And I don't know, maybe um, something about this color. Um, I, I don't know. I just put it on and it was like, this isn't me. It's not working. So um, my dear mummy was here recently and uh, I put it on her and she liked it. Um, so all I need to do is finish the other sleeve. I am part way through that sleeve. So I just need to finish this tiny little sleeve, sew the sleeves in, do a final blocking, and um, then it's hers. Lucky her. <laughs> She's getting a new sweater. Um, she she has gotten some of my, um, I don't want to say ca cast offs, some of my work that I thought, you know, was going to be fabulous and I knit it and I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, eh. not so much for me. And, um, but you know, she, um, she's not the super fuss budgety nitpicky human that I am and uh, she liked them so they go to her which makes me happy because rather than frogging it and knitting it into something else the time and effort that went into it it might as well go to someone who's going to appreciate it and love it and uh, that's my dear mummy of course mummy uh, now um, so uh, now I've got some things that have been sitting a bit longer let me look oh my goodness so many things oh wait yeah so here's another one that's kind of in active rotation. Um, so during the big RV trip that we just took, uh, we were in Ontario and our very, very dear friends live in Ontario, including my very, very dear friend, Kathy, who is also a knitter. And Kathy and I went to uh, the fantastic yarn store in Toronto called The Knitting Loft. If you're anywhere near Toronto, just go to the knitting loft like don't hesitate drop whatever you're doing right now get in your car drive there um uh, hopefully they're open and uh, go inside because pff, the store i can't even it's amazing um in fact it was so good i went twice anyway um kathy and i bought uh kits at the knitting loft because I had kits and I'm a sucker for a kit as you will come to find out um, for this uh, sweater uh, Westbourne Kinu Love by Isabel Kramer she's fabulous um, she there's a night and a, a day and a night version of the sweater the day version is uh, heavier yarn I can't remember I think DK maybe the night version is this very fine almost lace um silk so this is oh here i gotta do this again so you can see this see that's silk isn't it great oh, so good um it's uh, uh oh what is it it's um each ito ito yarn ito yarn it's gorgeous. Anyway, uh, so Kathy and I each bought one of these. Hers is a slightly different colorway than mine. And so it's a top down, um, kind of raglany and, uh, well, actually very raglany with, um, some striping here. As you can see the stripes starting to happen here. Anyway, um, it really, so started this in May, I guess, when we were there. We both started it. And um, I'm trying to not knit on it too much to give Kathy a chance to keep up. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> Kathy would tell you. <laughs> this, is, this is no disparagement <laughs> on her by any stretch of the imagination. Um, she doesn't, you know, she's not a voracious knitter like I am. 
she's a great knitter. She's fairly new, um, super keen. Um, anyway, she really didn't, uh, she asked me not to get too far ahead. So, um, I think she's at about the same stage I am right now. Uh, so really the rest of this is just knitting down the body in stripes and then um, doing a three quarter sleeve. I don't know when this will get done. Kathy is coming out here from Ontario in November. And so um, maybe the two of us can sit at, well, pff, maybe the two of us will sit and work on this some more together. Uh, there's no rush for this. It's definitely a summer weight sweater. It's a very, very loose kind of airy, gauge let me turn this around you can see see how loose and airy that is very loose gauge so definitely a summer knit um, although you know could be worn in the winter as well over something else over top of a t-shirt or something to make it a bit warmer okay so there's that one so I did that 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 that's all in active rotation and now we'll get on to some stuff that's been languishing um but some of these things i really like i really want to get done soon how am i going to make that happen i don't know you i need you to help me out i need you to like tell me um in the comments which of these you think i should put like first into active rotation um like which one would do you want to see because that will help me uh help spur me on <laughs> to <laughs> to get these things done okay thank you i appreciate that you're so helpful you people are great um now this is another project that i'm clearly half done because i have one uh, this is a thrummed mitten and i think I'm I, honestly I'm working this without a pattern because um, Stephanie Pearl McPhee and I'll put a link to her down below is a, a knitting teacher extraordinaire she's in Canada she lives in Ontario and she has a patreon um, thing I don't know what you call the patreon thing when somebody has a patreon they have a patreon thing so you can subscribe to that person and they post content for you um, knitting teachers who do it uh, post content with like instructional stuff so it's like a bunch of little mini classes and they post you know one or two a month and and you can watch them when you want to and go back and watch them as many times as you want as long as you subscribe to their patreon so it's kind of cool anyway she did a series on how to do thrummed mittens so for those of you who don't know, and I, it's not just muggles because there will be knitters who don't know about thrumming too. Thrumming is this on the inside. So you're taking, you're knitting, and while you're knitting, you're taking little clumps of roving, which is carded wool. Can you see that? Just carded wool. So you take like a little a little clump of it like this and you're knitting along and you kind of drop it around the stitch that you're knitting um, so that it sits on the outside like a happy little polka dot which almost looks like little hearts aren't they cute so cute um, so they sit on the outside of this they become like the outside of the stitch in this and then you just leave the inside loose so that on the inside of the mitt you get this lovely fluffy fuzzy very thermal layer um, to keep your hands super extra warm in the winter time right brilliant like I don't know apparently they work like nobody's business um, I haven't tried it yet and uh, that these are for um, he who shall not be named. He is going. He knows about these. I'm not surprised. Um, I just need to do the other one because um, you know his hands get cold, and he's the guy who has to go out and like shovel the driveway and stuff because 
well, I'm not going to say because he's the guy, because that's not right. But anyway, that's, uh, he usually does that. <laughs> I do it sometimes, but he's mostly the guy who goes out and shovels the driveway and his hands get cold when he's outside and he says gloves don't keep his fingers warm. So I'm thinking this is going to keep his fingers warm. Anyway, I'll make the other one. He can try them out and uh, we'll let you know if they really are as warm and effective and etc cetera, etc cetera, as um, as people say they are. As Stephanie Promitfi says there. And you can see on my bag, this project bag I got from River City Yarns says, uh, if I can't take my yarn, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Which is often true, but not always. I do sometimes go places without my yarn. So that needs to get done. Um, another thing that needs to get done is I'm working on a sample cowl. So um, this is something that I designed and this, I'll show you the, the finished version is here. So this is what they call an infinity cowl. It's the same on both sides. It's knit in the round, like it's like an unstuffed donut, right? So um, you knit it in the round, you make this big long tube, you bring the ends of the tube together and and uh, graft them. So somewhere here, I don't even I don't even know where I grafted this, but somewhere it's grafted. Anyway, this is my design. It's uh, it's mosaic knitting, which means even though it looks like super fancy hard color work it's not. You're only ever working with one color at a time and you're slipping the stitches in the other color as you go. So uh, mosaic knitting, gotta tell you, one of my favorite techniques. I will talk about it a lot. Um, so that's the finished one and I decided to knit some more some samples in different yarn. This is um, uh, West Coast Yarn Company yarn it's delicious um merino it's uh, her her dyeing technique is just oh, she's got such good taste um rachel she's amazing and she makes beautiful yarn go check it out i'll put a link down below um hi rachel uh so uh, yeah this turned out great i love it i wanted to do a sample in a higher contrast so i'm working on a sample in a higher contrast this is um, a silk and linen and alpaca blend. Cool, hey? Look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, it's going to be beautiful. I started it, I don't know, back like late winter and uh, haven't picked it up again. So um, I don't know when it's going to happen. You know, I think in my head that there's like all this time when between summer ends and Christmas, <laughs> really it's not, it's three months, you get September, October, November, and then Christmas, like, ugh, I can't, so I don't know how I'm going to make all this stuff happen, <laughs> I just don't, so again, help me out, vote, vote for this, if you want to see this done, um, I think I'm eventually going to write this up as a pattern, but I don't know. I'm going to do a whole other episode on stuff I've designed and uh, why I haven't written anything up as a pattern. And, um, you know, I, I, it, mostly it's time. Mostly it is. But maybe if I get yelled at enough uh, by enough people, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk about that another time. Okay, so there's that. Now, I have three sweaters sitting here started. Actually, I have four. <laughs> I lied. Um, yeah, I have four sweaters <laughs> started. Uh, one I just cast on the other day. Don't judge me, okay? I cast on a new sweater <laughs> last week. <laughs> I, I, di I didn't get very far. I don't know what came over me. I just... I, 
and I'll come to that in a minute, but I want to go over the ones that have been sitting first, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Ah, I know. Well, th this is it, right? Okay, this is what you get. You're just going to have to put up with it. You can either deal with this or you can't. Uh, but thank you for being here. You're great. Uh, okay, um, so this is Patty Lyons. Patty. Oh, Patty. Oh, I love Patty Lyons. Patty Lyons is a knitting designer, instructor, writer. She's got books. Oh, she has this book. Okay, if you knit, you got to have this book. And if you don't knit and you have friends who knit, you need to buy them this book. Um, this is Patty Lyons Knitting Bag of Tricks. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's the best knitting reference book out there. Um, just buy it. I have two. I have two copies. I have one up here and one downstairs. Um, so good. She's she's an incredible teacher. Really, 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 really incredible. Anyway, this is um, uh, one of her video classes. This is the Affinity. Uh, pull, there's a pullover version and a cardigan version. I'm knitting the cardigan version. I joined this class. I got quite a way through this and then put it aside because I think you know what happens like you're knitting it and then it suddenly it's like okay I'm not going to get this done for the season this is like a wintry fall wintry type sweater I'm not going to get this done for the season so um I'm just going to put it aside and cast on something else yeah I know but you're getting it right um so this is my version isn't it great look how great it is look look at this like, look at these cables. Patty made up these cables. She designs her own. Isn't that incredible? Anyway, so I have the back done. The back, I'll hold this up so you can really see. The back, nice, eh? Oh, it is drapey and soft. I'll talk about this yarn in a minute, I think. Did I? Yeah, I did. I did bring the ball band. <laughs> Yay for me. I'm so good at this som sometimes. Uh, this is uh, Manchester by Tacky, T-A-H-K-I, Tacky Yarns, um, not T-A-C-K-Y, which would be bad. <laughs> T-A-H-K-I, Tacky Yarns. 45% um, Highland Wool, 35% Super Fine Alpaca, and 20% Acrylic. So really cool blend. Um, this is a front and part way through a front and look at this nifty slant pocket how much do you love a nifty slant pocket i love it and i love that it's got this incredible cable part that runs down the front of the pocket patty you are so clever um, this is a fabulous design. I don't know why I have left this sit. The more I'm sitting here looking at this, um, I want to wear this. Like, I need to get this finished. Uh, so, uh, Affinity. Affinity. Okay, do you hear that? So you can put it in the comments. Affinity Cardigan. Just put Green Cardigan if you can't remember Affinity. Green Cardigan. Put it down there because I think, I think, well, I don't know. These other ones are pretty good too. Um, but this should get done so I can wear it this year. Okay, next. Moving right along because how far into this am I now? 45 minutes already. Pfft, insane. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this under an hour. <laughs> Got to move fast now. <laughs> okay, this is, uh, uh, this is a DK weight um, pullover, V-neck pullover. And this is uh, Grace Notes by Hohi Locatelli. Um, Hohi is a phenomenal um, designer. Uh, she's down in South America somewhere. I can't remember where she is. I apologize, Hohi. Um, she's incredible. Anyway, she makes great designs and I absolutely love this. Right up my alley again. Cable split into a v-neck. How wearable is that? Uh, and it's down both sides, uh, down the middle of the front and down both sides the back. It's just, I'll cover my face so you can see this, right? Right? Right. So 
I happen to have a bunch of this um, Madeline Tosh DK in kind of perfect, a perfect fade because I knit a, a, a comfort fade cardi once and it was beautiful. You can go into my projects and Ravelry and take a look at it. Beautiful. Didn't wear it. It was somehow too dense and like heavy and dense and just, I don't know, it was just never right. A little bit too long, a little bit too dense. I probably should have gone up a needle size. Anyway, um, it was a beautiful fade though. So I frogged it and frogging muggles uh, is when you um, rip something back and it's more tinking is when you unknit a few stitches. See, tink is knit backwards. So tinking is taking out a few stitches. Frogging is like just ripping it out because rip it, rip it, rip it, get it frogging. Um, I won't explain that again. Uh, so I've got a bunch of it now because I, I've, I uh, am reusing it from the Comfort Fade Cardi. So I'm, I am actually doing a fade. You can see how I started a fade here. See the striping between colors there? So I'm fading through here. Um, this is as far, <laughs> this is the back. This is as far as I've gotten. <laughs> it's about this far down the back. I really, I really wanna wear this sweater. I really do. Um, I really want to wear it like it's look at look at how beautiful this is my color um, my friend Allison would say this is totally Nicole blue and she's right totally Nicole blue um, so uh, I need to get back to this it's DK it should go pretty quick it's actually DK and I'm knitting it on a four and a half so uh, four and a half millimeter needle which for those of you who don't speak millimeters, that's a seven, that's a US seven. So it should go pretty quickly if I just picked it up and worked on it. Oh, and the affinity one is on a four and a half millimeter too. So like those two, you know, like if I took them downstairs and just like bopped back and forth between them and like this one bit, that one a bit, this one bit, uh, they'd be done in a couple of weeks probably. Okay, three, maybe four. Um, anyway, yeah. I. <sighs> This should just get in it. it should, it's going to be gorgeous. And I want to wear it. Okay, we'll put that back there. Now, third one. This is, I started this eons ago and haven't touched it. When did I start this? Hang on, I'm gonna just going to, I've got my Ravelry projects up here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm uh, talking too much. That'll happen. Like I said, it's 48, 49 minutes now. Um... I started this in December 2021. This is a sampler stitch pullover by Pat Olski and it's in a Vogue knitting magazine. Look at that. Look gorgeous, right? Look at the textures. Cables, blocky sampler. It's just cool. Uh, fall 2016. This is in there and I actually had the yarn the yarn that this pattern calls for um Scossel haiku simply worsted and i had knit the heart uh, tin can knits harvest cardigan out of it which it, totally fine i wore it now and then um this is it here it's being frogged so i can reuse the yarn and you know okay i i did a knit along at work when i was teaching some of my co-workers had a knit. Hi, co-workers. Um, and, uh, I, that's not professional. I don't care. Don't judge me. Um, and, uh, you know, it's great. And, but it, it's just, you know, I, I don't reach for it because it's, it's not like, you know, it's just okay. Um, so I'm frogging it and knitting this sampler thing. And you know what? I haven't touched this in a, <laughs> quite a while. I was pulling this out of the bag today and I'm like, wow, I did a lot of pieces of this. So I'm doing it um, V-neck because I like a V-neck. So here's the, the center. Like I've done this, a bunch of this. 
the center it's it's done in panels and then sewn together the panels are sewn together so I've done that center panel I've done um, another uh, I'm not sure if these are front front pieces or back pe there's an oh yeah okay so there's an underarm and then I think this might be the center back anyway um I'm not sure I'm gonna have to go back because <laughs> like I haven't picked this up in a long time I'm not sure where I am in the in the progress and which pieces I've knit and which ones I haven't so I'll figure that out anyway this is like on big needles um where are we on here um nope four and a half again <laughs> again four and a half again okay so, um, but this is, uh, what's this yarn made of? It's like a cotton blend or something. It's like a wool, I think, I think it's got cotton in it. Here, hang on, here's a ball band. Simply Worsted, uh, no, merino, 50% merino, um, acrylic and nylon. So it's not a cotton blend, it's a, it's a wool, um, synthetic blend which is totally fine and uh, it's great yarn anyway a six millimeter I can't this can't be right why if I got a four millimeter needle on here anyway I'll, I'll figure that out later I don't think that's right I think this is knit on a bigger needle um, I don't know why I have fours oh it should be fives yeah I think it should be fives five millimeter which is a eight 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 in us size anyway that that would not take very long to finish either frankly right so enough said um now what else have i got oh great okay so uh, last sweater that the one i cast on i <laughs> cast on but cool color right look at this look at this yarn look at this look 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 how cool is that so good so good that's hedgehog fibers singles um hedgehog fibers i'm saying i'm a lot uh skinny singles hedgehog there you go skinny singles yeah um i've had this yarn for a long long time i bought it at valley yarns in surrey uh which when i lived over on the mainland was um, my favorite yarn store, one of my favorite yarn stores, I have more than one. Um, anyway, I've had it for a long time. I haven't been able to figure out what to do with it. I think this is going to be the perfect thing. I'm really into, oh God, I could talk about this all day, but I can't get into this too much today. Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's just a v-neck tunic, quite simple, but the thing about it, and this is a vaudeville by, um, Osa uh, Tricosa, Osa, Osa Tricosa, even though it's A, A S A, Osa Tricosa. She's, uh, she was born in Sweden. Now she lives in Denmark. She's really interesting. She developed this top-down sweater method called Ziggurat, um, which is uh, unlike most top-down methods. Um, it kind of creates seams as you go but you just keep knitting so you work the back and then you come up the side and you work one front and then you come down and across the back and you go up and you work the other front and um, then you join them and you go under and you pick up sleeve stitches and knit down the whole thing is um, it's not really seamless because you're kind of creating seams but it's no um, seaming no sewing so it's interesting that way. I'm going to have another sip of my martini, if you don't mind. Mm. So good. Thank you. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to talk about this because I've been wanting to take it. The reason I did this was I've been wanting to take a deep dive into sweater knitting methods to really drill down, like, what are, because I'm, I'm looking for the best fit and wearability. Um, there's easy to net and a lot of top down in the round yoke kind of things are easy to net 
but what works like what I'm actually going to wear and what's going to last so and what fits and looks really good like looks really good anyway I wanted to try a bunch of different methods and compare them and this is one of them so um, as opposed to you know in pieces and seamed versus the ziggurat method versus um, uh, coconuts has a top-down method a different kind of seam-ish top-down method anyway I shouldn't have started that that really should go to the bottom <laughs> of the whip list because <laughs> I shouldn't have started it and what have I got lastly um, just quickly I've got a couple of blankets that I, I just kind of pick up every once in a while I, I was using these um, during zoom meetings as knitting because they're garter stitch so this is the 10 stitch blanket it starts in the middle with a square and then you start building out where's the middle there's the middle you start here and then you start mitering out and you're picking up as you go and working around and around and around like a big square snail and the yarn in this is from an advent box that I got and I wasn't all that crazy about um, the pattern that came with the advent box so I wanted to do something else and this seemed like a cool thing I thought this would be a good thing to teach um, with a group like a good knit along for a group that had a mix of knitters in it beginners and whatnot because you could get quite you could be quite simple or quite crazy or use color changing yarn or gradients or whatever you want to do I'm actually marling again remember marling holding two strands together to create some kind of transitions between all these very easter egg colored yarns which aren't my thing anyway um I haven't picked this up in a while it's pretty close to being done and uh there's no urgency because it's not for anybody uh, I think it would make a great baby blanket when it's finished, um, but there's no babies around right now who need this in my life. So um, maybe soon, we'll see. And then maybe I'll get spurred on to finish that. And then I've got another similar one that I've been working on since like 2020 uh, when COVID started and we all went into hibernation and again zoom meetings um unfortunately i'm in the middle of the row of a row so it's hard for me to show you but this is the pearl soho oh, sorry i'm gonna <laughs> probably cutting off my vocals this is a pearl soho uh, library blanket that is designed to look like books on a bookshelf kind of um and I'm, I don't know where am I, like in the last 20% of it. And then, um, I don't know if it gets a border or not. It maybe doesn't need one. And again, this was a stash buster because one more time I'm marling together different contrasty yarns. So you can see it looks kind of fuzzy and heathery. It's all garter stitch. It's modular, um, which means you're picking up stitches and knitting in different directions, up and across and up and across as you pick things up as you go. And it's really, really cool. It's going to be a fantastic blanket. Eventually it will get done. Right now I keep it in a big basket down in the living room. So uh, when we're entertaining and sitting in the living room with company, I can just pick it up and knit. I don't have to look at it. Um, it's just garter stitch it requires little to no attention so it's good for that kind of thing so um someday someday it'll get finished and i'll have a blanket okay for an hour i'm sorry um i'm gonna i'm gonna stop there <laughs> that's gonna be enough for now uh let me know which of those whips you think i should bring up to the top of the priority list uh, I do want to finish all of them. They're all worthy. 
And um, yeah, so I'll, I look forward to your feedback. Um, now, this is the part where I tell you uh, to do the stuff, the YouTube stuff. So uh, if you enjoyed this, which I'm guessing maybe you did if you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise like why would you still be here an hour later uh then please um hit the like the little thumbs up button down there like hit that so you like it and then if you really want to see more hit subscribe um these things will help with my algorithms and alg algorithms <laughs> sorry <Owen. laughs> um and uh yeah so like more people will see this maybe and and i can keep going and do more i have plans for for episodes um i think my next episode might be my um my designs we'll talk about my designs and uh where they're at and um, how they came about and whether or not i'm ever going to write them up and share them so uh, yeah, thanks so much for being here. This was great. I loved it. It was super fun. Um, not nearly as scary as I thought it was going to be all this time. I'm feeling pretty relaxed. Um, no, I didn't drink all my martini. <laughs> I only had a couple of sips. Uh, yeah, shut up, Oscar. None of your beeswax. Um, and uh, Oscar says goodbye, and uh, I say goodbye, and we'll see you uh, next time. So, thanks. Bye.